I don't think there was a beginning for me because I've been creative my whole life. My parents were both artists and I certainly was drawing forever. It was really the only thing I felt comfortable doing and I didn't know that I wanted to be an artist but I didn't know what else I wanted to do. So my career started at art school and then graphic design and then I got a job really quickly in a firm but kind of rejected computers really, really quickly into it. And I quit and started pursuing handcrafted graphic design which took me on a wild tangent all around the world for about eight years studying um, traditional sign writing, studying screen printing, pottery, photography, like old film photography, anything that I could sort of get my hands dirty with. And that's led to mural work and uh, commercial design. Massive influence from my family. My mother was a traditional sign writer during the 90s. Before that, my parents were both uh, potters on the main street here in Braidwood. So a huge upbringing um, dedicated to honouring the handcrafted. I've done um, a lot of reflection, forced reflection, because I was stuck. You know, through the bushfires, uh, we were completely surrounded here and the first fire of the season came within 700 metres of my house and my studio here. Um, for three months, we were stuck and the whole community was uh, on edge and feeling such pain for each other and for them, like, no matter which way the wind blew, someone's house was in the way of that fire, you know, because it was just so completely surrounded our community. And to go from that um, into COVID where we're forced separate, you know, we can't hug each other, we can't hold each other, to feel the tension at the supermarket where over the bushfires we were all like embracing each other and caring and now we can't you know, can't even share kids' toys or make food for each other or things like that was really, really hard in a really different way. And the, the thing that got me through was that it was raining, <laughs> really. We weren't in drought anymore. The dam was full for the first time in 15 years. And in August, I did an environmental science art residency that was meant to be over in Canada. It meant that I was doing it from here and I had two weeks, two solid weeks of Zoom workshops with scientists and environmentalists from all around the world. And it forced me to get into my landscape, which was all deeply affected by the fires and the floods and connect. Now I feel more uh, mentally and physically healthy and have my creativity back because I've been um, really nurturing it and like making a safe space for it. Um, there's a huge drive to create images that are really hopeful and dictating a really positive and um, nourishing and nurturing relationship between humans, animals and plants as equals. An all-female exhibition has been a long time coming like it's wonderful to see this sort of thing happening more and more now and um, the opportunity for female artists to connect under a really good banner you know of of support and of um, showcasing without clients briefs without um, overheads so to speak you know just an opportunity for us to be who we are and stand next to each other in completely like not a com uh, comparative or competitive way. I think it's really important for women to foster those environments and to reach out for each other and support each other. Well, uh, you know, over eight years or so, painting in the public's eye through traditional sign writing and mural work, oh, more often than not, I've heard from women, wow, you're so brave. I could never do that. Or I make art, but I'm not an artist. Or I paint this size, but I could never go that big. And, um, more and more I feel that I'm very passionate about providing women a space to express themselves and a safe harbour to um, feel supported and strong enough to make a bold stroke, you know, to have a voice in um, both mural content and getting up there and painting it alongside with me. So providing an opportunity for women of all ages to come and get involved through government supported workshops through this business that I run Red Hat Design Co uh, is the opportunity for women to come and stand side by side to have fun to take off um, brands and you know like just become a team and create something together that they can stand back and it's it's in the public realm, like it's there for maybe a month or maybe a year or maybe 10 years. And you can consistently walk past and look at that and say like, I had a voice there and I was a part of that. And I think that's really valuable.